Well, welcome to Holy Nation Church of Memphis, empowering you for life Bible study. I am Pastor Andrew Perpina, and I thank God for you tuning in once again. Listen, don't touch that dial. We have a wonderful teaching for you today. We have a guest teacher, Bishop Jerry Ivory. He's the jurisdictional prelate for Kenya, South Africa. Yes, Kenya, South Africa. He's a mission-driven bishop, and he has a wealth of knowledge to share with us in a two-series session uh, this time. This is part one, part one. You don't want to miss this or part two. And I thank God for you. Listen, like, share, and subscribe as we go on. Uh, We thank God for all of you that are, are, are following us. Uh, We have a wonderful prayer call every morning, Monday through Friday, and twice on Friday. So go out there and check us out on the website. Get that information. We'd love to see you at 6.15 every morning, 6.15 a.m., and then 6.15 and 10 a.m. on Fridays as well. First Lady has Perfecting Vessels, which comes on Fridays at 12 a, uh, 12 noon, rather, 12 noon on Fridays. You don't want to miss that as well. And we have, don't, uh, some of you may not have gotten yet, our wonderful mobile app. Go to the iTunes uh, store or the Google Play store and download, yes, download our Holy Nation Church of Memphis mobile app so you can keep up uh, with all of the things that are going on here at the nation. Amen. Listen, I thank God for you. We're going to go forward, get your pen, get your paper. I would love for you to put comments in there and talk back and forth uh, to those online. This is fully virtual, so we just want you to engage as we go forth in this. The African-American presence of the Bible. I used to say the black presence is the Bible. Then I used to say the African presence in the Bible. But now I say the African presence of the Bible. Amen. The African presence, what? Of the Bible. Because the whole Bible, whether you realize it or not, is based in Africa. Let me say this again. The whole Bible is based in Africa. Hallelujah. However, I'm going to give you a little test. Go to the next slide for me, my brother. All right. How many of you got your Bibles? I want you to go to Acts 8 and 27 because I'm about to ask you a question. How many of y'all remember the Ethiopian eunuch that Philip preached to? Do you know who I'm talking about? Amen. That's so small, y'all could not read that anyway, but <laughs> praise God. Well, in Acts the eighth chapter, it talks about the Ethiopian eunuch that was coming from Jerusalem to worship. Amen. And Philip ran alongside the chariot. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. My question to you is the Ethiopian eunuch a Jew or a Gentile? Amen. Is the Ethiopian eunuch a Jew? or a Gentile. Now, whatever your answer is, I want you to support it. Don't just say one thing and don't support it. Amen. (laughs) Praise God. So, let me just do a... How many of y'all say that he was a Jew? Okay. How many say that he was a Gentile? Okay. How many of y'all just don't know? (laughs) Uh, every Bible commentary that I have ever looked at every Bible encyclopedia when I go and look this question up every one of them say the same thing now I happen to have here the African Bible commentary written by Africans in Africa and I wanted to go and see what all of these African scholars said about the Ethiopian eunuch. And so, I will share this with you so that you will know for yourself what 
Bible scholars say concerning the Ethiopian eunuch. All right. Now, I bookmarked this so that I could go right to it. Somebody say, help us, Lord. All right, here we go. And this is their commentary on Acts, the 8th chapter, the 27th verse. Amen. He says, The Ethiopian eunuch was in charge of all the treasures of Queen Candace, and he was a God-fearer. That is, a Gentile with a strong commitment to the Jewish faith, but who, but one who had not been circumcised and become a proselyte. So here are African commentators and African scholars saying that the Ethiopian eunuch was a Gentile. That makes you feel good, doesn't it? <laughs> However, he's wrong too. Amen. The problem that we have, and the reason why I'm asking this question, is because I want for you to know how we see ourselves and how we perceive the Bible. We look at the Bible from a European Gentile perspective. Let me say this again. We look at the Bible from a European Gentile perspective. We look at the Bible from European eyes. Amen. Many of us, we think that Jesus was white. Amen. Many of us, we think that Moses was white. Amen. That's the reason why we say the black presence in the Bible, because we really don't think that we were really there except for in a few places. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. Well, Bishop, how can scholars like that say that he was a Gentile and you say something different? The Ethiopian eunuch was not a Gentile. He was a Jew. Amen. How do I know that the Ethiopian eunuch was a Jew? Because God said so. Mm. The Ethiopian eunuch is in the 8th chapter of Acts. In the 10th chapter of Acts, God said that the very first Gentile to be converted is a European, Roman, Italian, white man by the name of Cornelius. The Bible says he's the very first Gentile to be converted. If he's the first in the 10th chapter of Acts, then the Ethiopian eunuch in the 8th chapter of Acts cannot be a Gentile. Can I get an amen? Somebody said that's the Bible. Hallelujah. So, amen, I want to, first of all, many of us came up on the King James Version of the Bible. Say amen. Hallelujah. Y'all, King James in 1611, amen, was enslaving Africa. Oh, yes. King James changed the Bible when it came to us. And so many times we're reading a Bible, a book, that, amen, changed words. I have to let people know King James, that, that Jesus did not speak in King James English. Y'all did know that, didn't you? Jesus did not speak in King James English. There was no King James English for a thousand years after Christ. There's no England for a thousand years after Christ. Are y'all getting this? Amen. So, but we love the King James Version. We grew up on the King James Version. Amen. But the King James Version is one of the worst versions out there. Oh, somebody say, help us, Lord. I know, boy, 
Amen. I'm about to commit blasphemy. <laughs> Up in the, yes. Amen. Y'all heard our bishop uh, talking, preaching last night about the Masoretic text and, and all of that. Amen. About the Septuagint. Praise God. Amen. The reason why modern day translations like uh, the NIV, the New American Standard, the reason why many of the modern translations are much better is because of the Dead Sea Scrolls. How many of y'all know about the Dead Sea Scrolls? Amen. That they found back in 1945, somewhere in there. Amen. Where uh, they had one of the things that uh, a Jew or Hebrew cannot do. They can never throw scriptures away. Did y'all hear what I said? They can never what? Throw scriptures away. Amen. Uh, uh, when I first went to Israel in 1997, I'll tell you more about it. Uh, but uh, they actually had whole rooms in the uh, in their temples and in their uh, places of of residence where they would put the uh, old scrolls into jars. And so during the 19, uh, not the 19th century, but during 70 AD, when the persecution came and the Jews had to leave, they had to run and flee and they had to take the scriptures with them. And they took them down to the caves of Qumran that run south from Jerusalem down toward the Dead Sea. And they put the caves in there. When in the 1945, I'm thinking, amen, young uh, shepherd boy was down there just throwing rocks. And he threw a rock into one of the caves and he heard something uh, break and shatter. And come to find out, they had all of these uh, copies of the scriptures there, of the Old Testament, of the Masoretic text, amen, already there was that they had over 2,000 copies. And they found out that the scriptures had not changed by not one jot or tittle. Amen. So modern day translations now have access to all of these manuscripts. Amen. Where King James Version only had access to about six or seven uh, of the manuscripts. And, uh, and they were trying to translate from things like the Latin Vulgate. Amen. So I'm... Um, just giving you a little background. So we, modern day translations are a little bit better than uh, before. So now, back to the Ethiopian eunuch, the Gentiles could not worship in the temple. Amen. When they said that the, uh, that the, gen, that, uh, the Ethiopian eunuch was coming from uh, Jerusalem to worship, Gentiles couldn't worship in the temple. Can I get an amen? Praise God. So, you know, if you come from there to worship, amen, Gentiles can't worship in the temple. Amen, that's another reason why you know he's what? Not a Gentile. Amen, Paul is being attacked in Acts 21 and 27 because it was thought that he brought a Gentile Greek Trophimus in the temple. Do you all remember that? Amen, Paul is being what? Attacked and stoned because... They saw him. Now, think about this. And we'll go there just for a moment because this is, uh, this is also showing you the ethnicity. Amen. Here, God, the Bible reveals to you that Paul is black. You mean to tell me that the Bible says that the apostle Paul is black? Mm. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. The Bible literally lets you know that Paul is a black man. And it's found in Acts of the Apostle. Apostle. So the Apostle Paul is the Apostle to the who? To the Gentiles. Okay. Let's see now. Amen. Where did Paul go to uh, preach? Did he go to uh, Greek? To Greece? Somebody say yes. <laughs> You know, I know some of y'all geographically challenged. <laughs> Can I get amen? But when you hear Corinthians, 
Amen. Thessalonica. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Amen. Rome. He went to Rome. Can I get amen? So he's going to European countries. Does, does Paul go to Egypt? No. Does he go to Africa? Does he go to Ethiopia? No. He goes to where the Gentiles are. And so the Bible actually says that, uh, that this is where the Gentiles settled. So Paul, a man's apostle to the Gentiles, so he got one of his con con converts, Trophimus, a man. They see him with Trophimus. Now, my problem is, if Paul is white, Trophimus is a Greek, he's white. And if the Jews are white, how do they know that Trophimus was a Gentile? One of these things is not like the other. <laughs> Can I get an amen? Now, the Bible says that they accused Paul, they saw Paul with Trophimus. So, now, so between Paul and Trophimus, one of them not looking the same because they recognized that Trophimus was not like the rest of them. And they began to accuse Paul of bringing Trophimus in the temple because Paul went in the temple to worship. And they catch Paul and accuse him of all types of things, and they begin to stone him. Now, the other set of white people in that day, the Romans, amen, hear of the turmoil who are in charge, comes down, amen, and rescue Paul from the people. Amen. Now, there's... The Romans, we know they're white. Can I get amen? The Greeks, we know they're white, okay? But now let's look at what they think that Paul is. Amen. And so, uh, thank you, sir. You're, such a, you're wonderful. You're doing real well. The Bible says that they're carrying Paul up into the council. And Paul asked to speak to the captain in Greek and said, can I speak to you for a moment? And the captain, the Roman captain, says, can you speak Greek? He is shocked that Paul can speak in the European language, the Grecian language. Now, what does that let you know? Paul ain't looking Grecian. Can I get an amen? Also, Paul ain't looking at Italian. Amen. Now, let's find out who he thought Paul was. He said, aren't you that Egyptian that led out about 4,000 men that were murderers? Amen. He don't even go, aren't you that Jew? Aren't you that Hebrew? Amen. He, said, aren't you? he goes immediately all the way to Africa. Paul must have been looking mighty black for him to go all the way to Africa. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. So the Bible says that the Hebrews were black people. In fact, y'all, the whole nation of Israel is birthed in Africa. Amen. Let me say this again. The whole nation of Israel is what birthed where? In Africa. Let me say it again. The whole nation of Israel is birthed where? In Africa. Change the slide for me, my friend, because I'm going to try to go quickly because I really enjoyed. Ooh -wee. Amen. Uh, uh, if we have time, if y'all be really good, I will tell y'all the answer. To where Cain's wife come from. Yes. I will tell you the answer from an exegetical biblical point of view where Cain's wife come from. So if y'all talk to me, so skip all of that brother, go on to the next because uh, alright. One of the things I do when I get to uh, 
uh, and the, let me just get, hit on this, and I'll come back to the whole nation of Israel. Uh, God said he created man from the what? The dust of the ground. So when I go to Africa and I be teaching, I teach the same thing in Africa because when I go to Kenya, I tell them there are white men walking around in black bodies. They have no sense of self. They don't know who they are. They don't love themselves. I've been going to Africa since 2007. I've never seen a picture of a black Jesus. I've never even seen a black Santa Claus. I have never seen a black doll in the stores in Kenya. Our people are just that messed up. Amen. So I have to teach this more there than I do here. Amen. I told y'all, I <laughs> tell them, I said, you're nothing but white men walking around in black bottles. I did the, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, y'all remember the doll study that was done? Amen. During the, uh, uh, 1950s. Amen. Where they took the black dog, you know, took the white dog and the black dog and both put them together and said, and they did it on, you know, people in, in, uh, in the South here in America. And, uh, they asked the black church, which dog is a good dog? And they all pointed to the white dog. They said, which dog is the black dog? The bad dog. They all pointed to the black dog. I did the same study in, uh, Africa a few years ago and it came out uh, in Kenya it came out just the same amen all the white all the good uh, characteristics belong to the white dog and all the bad characteristics belong to the black dog and I asked the children which dog do you they all pointed to the white dog our people are messed up all over the world can I get amen all right so one of the things I do, I ask them, I said, was Adam uh, uh, white or black? And they all said Adam was white. I said, God made Adam from the dust of the ground. And I would pull it out my bill for it and hold up about two or three hundred dollars. I said, who, who wants this? They all jump. Yeah, 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 I want it. <laughs> Amen. I said, the first person to go out here and get me some dirt. I said, I'm going to give you this $300. You ought to see folks jumping up, running to the door. I said, hold it. I said, make sure you bring me back some white dirt. They all come back and sit down. <laughs> I said, if God made Adam out of the dust underground, there got to be some white dirt somewhere. <laughs> if Adam is white, can I get an amen? <laughs> so... So I've yet to have seen white dirt. And in fact, I took some of the dirt. I meant to bring it today, but uh, I brought some of that rich, uh, uh, ruddy dirt. And y'all, the word ruddy means to be reddish brown like our skin color. And so when you read in the Bible when it says that David was fair and ruddy, See, we think of the word fair as being light-skinned. Can I get an amen? But that is King James' word. Amen. The word fair actually means to be handsome, to be beautiful. Do you understand? So the Bible actually is saying that David was black and beautiful. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because you can't be ruddy and white at the same time. Come on, y'all. Can I get amen? Give me the next slide, my brother, and go on, go on past that, please. Go on past that, because I can't see nothing. All right. All right. Now, let's go to the table of nations. Like I said, uh, and before we get to the Africa as a nation, we know the flood happened. Can I get amen? Everybody got killed in the flood. Noah, amen, except for his three sons, their wives, and Noah's wife, eight folk. Can I get amen? All right. So the Bible says that after the flood, amen, that, amen, I put it back up. I'm, yeah, thank you. So Japheth, amen, Genesis 10, 1 through 5. It said, Japheth fathered 14 nations, uh, Shem, uh, Ham, father 30, and Shem 26. All right. All right, let me, uh, 
break this down to. So Noah had three sons. What are the names? Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The Bible says that Japheth fathered, amen, the Gentile nations. It literally says that. It literally says that he goes up north, amen, and they settle up north. He said, these are the isles of the who? Of the Gentiles. The Bible called them from the beginning the Gentiles. This is where Europe, France, Poland, Germany. And so, in fact, in one of the list of the descendants of Japheth is somebody called Ashkenaz. Ashkenaz are people who settled in Poland and in Germany and in Russia area. Amen. From where we get the European Jew that is in Israel right now, they are called the Ashkenazi Jews. Well, the Bible says that they were the Gentiles. Now, while I'm on this, Jesus said that Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Amen. In 70 A.D., when they tore down, the burned down, the temple, the Romans came in, amen, and they sacrificed that pig in the temple, amen, from 70 A.D., uh, 40, well, about 40 years after Christ, amen, Jesus prophesied of it, and said that these things are going to happen when he said the temple, that every stone going to be torn down from the temple. Y'all know why that happened? It's because when they were burning Jerusalem, amen, the gold that was in the temple and everything was sleeping down in between the cracks, and the folks, amen, went up, and they tore every stone out down just to get to the gold, just like Jesus said. But Jesus said that Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. The Gentiles that are the Jews that are in Israel today are not the original Jews. They came down during the 1940s running from the Holocaust from Poland and occupied Israel. In fact, uh, uh, y'all remember Nasir? Uh, who was the uh, president of uh, of Egypt? Amen. They did an interview on him, brother. If you can go, give me the next slide up, and I'm trying to run through. Amen. Because I'm just so full. All right, hold on. I can read this. All right. So you see in Genesis 10, 1 and five, it says the third person, and the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, and Ripar, and and Togoma. And it's the fifth verse, and by these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, everyone after his tongue, after his families, in their nations. The Bible says that the European, that the European nations are the Gentiles. But we think of ourselves as the Gentiles. Yes. Bishop asked me about the Hebrew Israelites. I told him the Hebrew Israelites are actually right. Except for one thing. They stay up under the law. Jesus was a Hebrew Israelite. <laughs> Amen. If they just continue unto Jesus, Jesus is the fulfillment of the law. Jesus didn't come to get rid of the law. He came to fulfill the law. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Give me the next slide, my friend. Hallelujah. You're doing a wonderful job. Now, and the sons of Ham are Cush, Mizram, Foot, and Canaan. The sons of Ham. Now, we say Ham, but in the Hebrew language, it's pronounced Kam. Somebody say Kam. And what's the ancient name of, Af of Africa? Anybody know? Commit. Amen. Commit. The land of Ham. And so, Cush is modern day who? Say what? I can't hear you. 
Cush is modern day what? Oh, Lord. I'm talking to geographically challenged folks again. <laughs> Same group. <laughs> Cush, y'all, is modern. No. Hapano. That's why he did for no. Hapano. <laughs> Y'all, Kush is modern day Ethiopia. Okay? Mizram is modern, put that back up for me, brother. Mizram is modern day Egypt. Amen. Foot, P H U T, is modern day Libya. Y'all know where Libya is on, in Africa, right? You know, up toward the north. Amen. Ooh, y'all, I'm talking to y'all, y'all. <laughs> and Canaan is modern day what? Israel. Now, wait, now y'all get this. Hold on now. Ham, what land is Ham? Lord. All right. Let me say it again. Ham. Who is Ham, y'all? He's one of the sons of Noah. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Japheth settled the Europeans, the Gentiles. Shem, amen, is where we get the Hebrew lineage from. Ham is the one who settled the land of Africa. All right, we're together now. So Ham is who? <laughs> Boy, you can give folks an open book test and they'll still feel. <laughs> that girl, yeah, I'm just a big Ethiopia. <laughs> All right, Ham is who? Ham is who? Ham is who? All right. Praise the Lord. Now, Ham got four sons who's going to settle in the land of Africa. One is by the name of Cush. There you go, girl. Cush is who? Ethiopia. Ethiopia is very, very important, y'all. They don't have time to go, amen. But most of the Romans, the Catholics, amen, the Coptic church that was in Ethiopia, most of the scriptures, amen, the first Bibles, the first scriptures were made in, in Ethiopia. The old, the second oldest church in the world is in Ethiopia. Mm, did y'all know that? Ethiopia has never been conquered. There are 54 nations in Africa, 54, amen. 53 of those nations have been conquered by European uh, 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 countries, amen. The only country that has never been conquered, amen, by European country is Ethiopia because Ethiopia says that they have the Ark of the Covenant, and they've been saying it, Amen. For over 2,000 years. Amen. They say that every time that the Italians tried to get them, amen, every time they had to go to war, they brought the, uh, um, they brought the uh, Ark of the Covenant out, and they have never been conquered. Isn't that something? And when I went to uh, Ethiopia, they have a temple where they keep the Ark of the Covenant that is guarded by a priest, 24 hours a day that lives there, 24 hours a day, that only comes out every once in a while. And while I was there, me and my wife was there, I went uh, up to the gate and the priest came out and laid hands on us and blessed us. Ooh, I said, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And so Ethiopia, amen, uh, um, they have some of the oldest pictures of Christ. 
and of the Madonna, of Mary and the Christ. And the, and the oldest pictures, paintings of Jesus is black. Now, in the same place, all of a sudden, Jesus turned white. And I asked them, I said, now how in the world your oldest pictures of Jesus and Mary is black? And all of a sudden, y'all got pictures of Jesus over here and Mary, amen, white. And they said because of tourism, the white folks coming to visit and bringing the money. Amen. That's, that's a true story. Amen. So Cush is who? Cush is who? Cush is who? Ham is who? Woo, boy. All right. Mizram is who? Mizram. <laughs> Mizram is Egypt. Amen. Oh, Lord, help us. <laughs> All right. And Canaan is who? Canaan is who? Wait a minute. Where is, where is, and foot is who? Libya. Where is Libya located? Where? It's in Africa. Where is Ethiopia located? Mm. Where is Egypt located? Where is Israel located? It's where? The Middle East? Where's the Middle West? Where's the Middle North? Where's the Middle South? The Bible says that Canaan is in Africa. Israel is modern-day Canaan. Why is it that they not only want to take Israel out of Africa, they want to take Egypt out too? That's true. I went to Israel in 1997 because uh, it was my goal. I always wanted to go. And this is before 9-11. And they held me in security in New York City. Wouldn't let me get on a plane for over three hours. Questioning me because I'm going on a pastoral fam familiarization trip to Israel. And one day in Jerusalem, we got to ourselves. And I wanted to go fly from Jerusalem to Cairo, the capital of, well, y'all so wonderful. Amen. I wanted to fly from Jerusalem to Cairo because I didn't know whether I would ever get that close again. And I wanted to step foot in the motherland. Do you know what those folks argued me down about? They said Egypt was not in Africa. I said, say what? Egypt not in Africa. They said, no. I said, Egypt is in Africa. I said, where is the Nile River that runs through Egypt? What continent is it on? How in the world are you going to tell me Egypt not in Africa? Hey, man, we are in back and forth with these European Jews. I said, if Egypt not in Africa, where is it? And they said, the Middle East. I said, Lord, have mercy. The Europeans don't want us to claim what God says that we are. Do you understand? Amen. And so, it's important for you to know, amen, Canaan is in Africa. It's on the continental plain. Israel is in Africa. Do you understand? Amen. Now, let me show you. Go, keep going, my... Uh, Oh, man, you got that up. All right. Whew. Man, you're doing a wonderful job. Okay. So everything in green is a descendant of 
ham. Everything that is in red is where is a descendant of Japheth. Amen. Uh, so you see, put over here. Oh, thank you. Ooh, I'm wonderful. Ooh, that's even greater. Boy, when I grow up, I want to be just like you, Bishop. <laughs> so you see, put over here. You see, Mizram. And down below here, you will see Kush. Oh, bring that thing back up. <laughs> so, <laughs> you see, even where you got the Philistines, the Canaanites, the Amorites, amen. And, uh, and so, uh, Shem, uh, dealing with Aram and Esher and made up with the Syrians and even the Persians, the Scythians. But you see how, uh, the only one, the Hittites, settled up north, amen, and one reason why, uh, you know, remember the Moors, how many of y'all remember the Moors? What was significant about the Moors? Anybody can tell me in relationship to, to Spain? All right, I ain't come give y'all no test. All right, so you see they how they got J. Van, that's the Greeks over here, Gomer, amen, uh, it's where uh, Russia or uh, uh, where Poland and all of them are going to be talking more as well. And then you got the Ashkenazi. You got the Ashkenazi where the Ashkenazi Jews are going to come from. So these are what the Europeans are. Uh, amen. You can go to the next slide. You did a very good job, my brother. Amen. The two greatest civilizations started by black people was Egypt and Babylon. Let me say this again. The two greatest civilizations that was started was Egypt and who? Babylon. Amen. Now, Cush had a son by the name of who? Nimrod. Nimrod. Y'all remember Nimrod? Amen. But they said that he was a, uh, a mighty hunter before the Lord. Well, he started Babel. He started Babylon. Well, the two greatest civilizations for all the math, all the science, and everything from is Egypt and Babylon. The, are you understand that the Bible says it was started by black folks? Huh? Yeah. I didn't ask you how we got conquered, brother. <laughs> He said, we didn't invent gunpowder. That was our only fault. <laughs> Amen. So the Bible says that the Hebrews and the Africans were the saints. Joseph's brothers thought he was an Egyptian. Now, y'all, come on. If Joseph sold into slavery, he becomes prime minister or governor over Israel. His brothers come there to, to buy grave. Now, if if the Jews are white, that means that if Joseph is born a white boy, he's going to grow up to be a white man. Except for Michael Jackson. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Only one I know that grew up, born a black boy and grew up to be a white woman. Oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Father, help me. I'm sorry, y'all. Forgive me. But anyway, if you grow, if you're born a black boy, and grow up to be a black man. Can I get amen? All right. So if, if his brothers are white and they come to Africa, then Joseph, how come they didn't recognize Joseph as being a Jew? If the Jews are different from the Egyptians. Do you understand? How come they say, mm, you look like us? What tribe you from? Amen. And so, amen, but the Bible said they could not tell that Joseph wasn't an Egyptian because he spoke to them through an interpreter. Amen. Also, y'all, amen, Moses, let me see, the whole nation of Israel is, 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 is birthed in Africa. They stayed in Africa, in Egypt, how long? 400 and what? 30 years. They went in how many people? They only went in 70. 
and they're coming out two or three million strong. Who are they marrying? They're marrying African people. If they were little white, they're coming out black as face. Can I get an amen? Amen. Look at Obama. His mama was white. Married a black man. Amen. How do Obama look? Amen. He marries an African woman and have children. How do they look? Y'all, that's just one generation. Amen. And so Joseph marries an African woman. Who did he marry? The daughter of the priest of all, Asenah. Amen. They have two children. What are their children name? That boy said, Miss from me. me. <laughs> Ephraim and Manasseh. <laughs> How the people out here gonna know more than the preacher? <laughs> Ephraim and Manasseh. What nationality is Ephraim and Manasseh? If you're born in Africa, what are you? I just want to know, if you're born in Africa, what would it make you? Mm. So, they down to 430 years born where? In Africa. By the time Moses get there, they still marrying black folks. Why? Because M Moses married who? And she's in which nationality? Ethiopian. Amen. <laughs> now, why does Miriam? And Aaron get upset with Moses because he married an African. Why? Who said it over here? And see, and that is why we look at the Bible through European Gentile eyes. We think that the reason why they get upset at Moses is because he marries a black woman. And that they are white. Yes, that's what we think. Can I get an amen? Well, that can't be true because they were all black. Amen. The reason why you know Moses wasn't white because the second miracle, you will never see them do on television. Charleston Heston didn't do it. Amen. But God told him to put his hand in his bosom and pull it out and it turned white. If his hand is already white, that is not a miracle. Can I get an amen? amen? But now let his hand be black like yours and mine in the train. What? That's a miracle. The problem was not that they were black and white. The problem was, he, which is the same problem that is in Africa today. Because you don't know nothing, about Africa, you have no sense of, of knowledge of its culture and everything. The culture of the Bible is the culture of Africa to this very day. He married somebody of a different tribe. And in Africa today, right now, Amen. You can be one of the tribes of Kikuyu. Another one is a Lua. Let me see. Uh, I'm sorry, y'all. Forgive me, but thank God for my wife. Amen. Being here, uh, <laughs> Sister Ivory, and one of my church members, Mother Smotherman. Amen. They could be Kikuyu. They could be Kikuyu, light-skinned like they are. Amen. You will be a Lua. Amen. Yes. Now, <laughs> now, a Kikuyu, you can't be no lure 
and then bring home a kikuyu to your family. Tommy, you gonna marry a kikuyu? Oh no, that ain't gonna happen. Do you understand? In 2008, a man, a kikuyu, ran against a lure, and brother, a man, civil war broke out. People who went to work together, who were neighbors together, who uh, didn't go to church to me, they didn't have to church together. Amen. But they started killing one another in the streets, all because one tribe ran against another. And the United Nations had to come in and bring in peace and appoint one as president and the other one as prime minister until they redid their constitution and had another election. And they're having one this year. Praise God. I hope it's over by the time I go there in August. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. But we don't know, we don't understand the culture of the Bible. We look at it through European eyes. When we should be looking at it through what? African eyes. Amen. All right. I'm going to. All right. Uh, now. One of the reasons why, and I, um, let me give you this. How many of y'all heard of the Lemna Jews of South Africa? Let me tell you, when the disbursement came down, the Jews spattered all over Africa, all the way down even to South Africa. They, they came to Kenya, where I am, to Tanzania, which is right next to it. They came to uh, Nigeria. In fact, you look at some of the ancient maps, they would say that the Nigeria area was one of the lands of the, uh, of the Hebrews. When I was in college at the University of Memphis and doing my bachelor's degree, my foreign language that I took there was Igbo. Amen. Now, I know many of y'all don't know what Igbo is, right? But the it's, but it's, way it sounds is a derivative of the word Hebrew. Amen. That was my foreign language back in college, back in 1980s. Amen. Uh, uh, and the only words I know now is one and one and one and wokey. That's it. That's my brother and my, that's my sister and my brother. That's all I know. One and wokey is my brother. One and one of them is my sister. Amen. But I know Swahili. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Una fahamu ki Swahili? Huh? Uh, do you remember, Bishop, this sister, when we were coming up at Pentecostal Temple, they called her Sister Baba? Yeah, yeah. How many of y'all remember Sister Baba? You know, and we you know we used to tease and go, you know, uh, that woman ain't speaking in tongue. And we, could, we named her sister, Sister Baba. Amen. One time she hit her head, they said she went, Baba, Baba, Baba. <laughs> they named her until I went to Africa. And I was in church, and they started going, ba, 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 ba. And the word ba, ba means father. This woman was speaking Swahili all the way in America, saying, father, father, father. And we were teasing her. Amen. The Limda Jews of South Africa, they did a study. These people, are they are Christians, but they yet carry on their Jewish practices. What's distinction about them is that they say that they are descendants, the male of their tribe are descendants of the Leviticus priesthood. Did y'all hear what I just said? They're descendants of who? The Leviticus priesthood. Go ask any one of these Jewish rabbis, these European rabbis, say, oh, are you a descendant of the Leviticus priesthood? They go, oh, no, 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 no. They did a DNA testing on these guys, and they found out that among the Jews, among these Lemda Jews, that the CMH marker that is most prevalent in the, co the koanim, which, which is Hebrew for the priesthood, the Leviticus priesthood, amen, or the hereditary priests, amen, that they were found in the males of, 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 of the uh, Lemda Jews. They tried to do the DNA testing in the Ashkenazi Jews, 
and they could not find any significant marker, DNA marker, saying that Ashkenazi Jews are from the original people. And they said that the Lambda Jews in South Africa is. Isn't that amazing? Now, how many of y'all heard of the human family tree? The National Geographic in New York City in 2009, somewhere in there, did a DNA sample for every ethnic group up under the sun. And they came back and said, that everybody up under the sun are descendants of black people from Africa. Amen. How many of you heard of the black Chinese? Amen. Google, when you get a chance, go to YouTube and put in black Chinese. A study, an uh, interview going to come up with the British Broadcasting Corporation where this geneticist in China wants to prove that the Chinese are the only people who are direct descendants of Homo erectus, who they consider to be the first man, and that they were the people who were derived of themselves. He did 20,000 DNA samples throughout Asia, over 20,000 samples. And the lady from the BBC said, how many did you find were direct descendants of Homo erectus. He said, not one. He said, what did you find? He said, we found that we are all descendants of black people from Africa. Wow, what do you think about that? It gets better, it gets better. Uh, he uncovered some nuggets on that that I did not have a clue about. Uh, even in the Bible, those scriptures is something when you can go through the word uh, and go through your life with scripture and show where uh, it's not your imagination that the enemy wants to kill, steal, and devour you. Amen. Hallelujah. You have promise in your life and just maintain that promise. Listen, I thank God for you. I uh, want to see you again next week on for the part two. Uh, did you enjoy it? I hope you did. I know you did. I know you did. And I just thank God for Bishop Jerry L. Ivor. Bishop, we love you and we thank God for you. Just keep on doing what you're doing. You've been doing it a long time and God has truly blessed you and you have blessed us through your experiences and the word of God. Uh, listen, I want to tell you, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, but I want to challenge you right now. Sow a seed of faith. Sow a seed of faith into this ministry. Holy Nation Church of Memphis. Uh, we are located at 3333 North Old Brownsville Road in Riley Barlett area. And of course, if if you can't get us uh, in the geographical location, you can most definitely catch us virtually on one of our virtual platforms, be it um, YouTube or Facebook uh, or our website, however you want to do it. Don't forget, don't forget, Holy Nation has a brand new mobile app. A brand new mobile app. Our friends from In Peace, you hear me talking about In Peace, they have developed a brand new mobile app for us, and you don't want to be left out. Your church, your, your nonprofit, your organization, communication is all about. It's all about communication. And In Peace, go to our, uh, you can go to your Play Store, Google Play Store, or go to uh, the Apple iTunes. Go to iTunes, go to the Apple Store. And download, put in Holy Nation Church of Memphis, and it'll pop up. Download that app so you can stay in contact with us. See what's going on here in ministry. There are a lot of one of the things that God is doing here. We want to let you know about it and become a part of it. Our members that are all over the country, they're connected with us, and we want you to connect with us. Be a partner today with us. However you want to do that, sow that seed in ministry and watch God work on your behalf. Continue to pray for us as we're dealing with our Pre-K Academy. Our Pre-K Academy is coming up real, real soon. We've been working on it and getting it together and waiting on the few little uh, legal protocols and all that good stuff so we can educate children, educate 
gave children. It's all about the babies. Uh, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Isn't that something? And the enemy doesn't want you to have the basics. He doesn't want you to have, he doesn't want your child to have the basics. Those basic building blocks of learning and 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 getting stronger in knowing who you are. Isn't that something? Listen. Until next time, I want to tell you, like I always say. Everything, and I mean everything, is going to be all right.